Hi, it's Midnight Mule and today I'm going to talk about a letter that I wrote to the Watchtower in London, that's the headquarters of the Jehovah's Witnesses for Britain, and then the reply I got from them. Now some of you will know that the last two or three weeks I've recorded a few videos to do with autism. I have high functioning autism which is also known as Asperger's, uh, but I didn't want the YouTube algorithms and everything to get messed up with this video so I'm hopefully going to put this on a different channel. I've done an awful lot of Watchtower research the last few years because I'm very interested in it so hopefully somebody out there will leave a comment suggesting they'd like me to do another video on something else and then I can just keep those on this channel but we'll see how it goes. Something important you need to know by the way is I'm not a Jehovah's Witness, I've never been a Jehovah's Witness but I have done study, been to the meetings. The reason I say that is in case any are watching, I'm aware you've been told about apostates tell lies, etc. I'm not an apostate. I can't be. I've never been a Jehovah's Witness. Right. My letter. I know you can't really see that, so I'm going to read it to you. Oh, before I start, I need to show you. I need to talk about uh, copyright fair use notice. Any copyright material used within this video has been done so for the purpose of criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship or research. There you go, YouTube. Job done. Right, back to my letter. Dear Watchtower, this is from the 22nd of November 2018. It is with great interest that I have been reading a broad selection of your publications over the recent years. I am not a Jehovah's Witness, nor have I ever been one. And as far as I know, I have no relatives that are JWs. And then I talk about some JWs I know. And I say I've attended recent conventions. I've been to some memorial services as a guest, of course. That's their Easter service, effectively. They call it memorial. And I've been doing a Bible study since April. This is 2018. I did that Bible study for about a year, just so you know. It was it was very slow going because I'm Aspie. It would take us maybe three sessions to do one chapter. And each session might be like two hours because I'm quite thorough. But we'll get to that anyway. Da, 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 da. Okay, I've been doing a Bible study since the April with a ministerial servant. I watch the monthly broadcast with great interest and frequently read the daily text online. So for those that don't know, they've got a website and there are daily texts. They normally regurgitate something from a recent watchtower and I read those with interest. I do not attend a church, but as a child I was taken to church and was taught and read the Bible. From this, I have at least a basic understanding of what the Bible says and who the main characters are. Before we started the Bible study, I warned the ministerial servant that I would not let him get away with anything, i.e. any claims made by him or the watchtower would need to be backed up by the Bible where applicable or elsewhere in print. He agreed that this was perfectly reasonable and we both enjoy our weekly study together as we work through the booklet, What Can the Bible Teach Us? Oh, I just want to mention that. So we started with this, what the Bible can teach us. And it's really quite basic. And we ended up going back to this one, which is slightly earlier, but it's not quite as dumbed down. Now, something that amuses me a bit, this is a bit, <laughs> bit of a sidetrack. If you do a Bible study with a Jehovah's Witness, this is a Bible study. It's this book. It's in my opinion, it's not really a Bible study. What it is, you're learning the Watchtower's views on what they think about life and lots of other things, and they sprinkle in Bible verses. There are 66 books in the Bible. This is not a study of 66 books. So as an example, there are four Gospels in the New Testament. The fourth one is John. These three books, there's like 1,300 pages here, are just on John. This is a Bible study on John. That's what a Bible study looks like. This is a paraphrase of an organization's views on things. Sprinkled with verses, like I said. We had a good time going through this because every sentence, every question we could talk about. Anyway, sorry, I was sidetracked. I do that a lot. Aspies can monologue. I, sorry about that. I'll try to stay on track. The Jehovah's Witnesses that I know it and the ministerial servant are 100% sure that the Watchtower organization is God's organization and are 100% sure that what they teach is true 
and their interpretation of the Bible is true. In contrast to their certainty, I would say that I simply have an understanding of the Bible, but logically I accept that I could be wrong, and I am very interested to listen to what the Watchtower has to say. If it can be proved to me from the Bible that they are God's organisation and their teachings are true, then obviously I would want to be a JW too. Now that's just basic logic, and anyone should be able to say that. If, if somebody could prove to you that the Bible was true, and that the Watchtower organisation were who they claim to be, which is effectively God's channel, then you've got a real problem. You've either got to align with them, otherwise you're going to get destroyed at Armageddon if you're still alive. So that's that. So it's just logical. But I've always been honest with the JWs I meet, with the ministry or servant, the Bible study. I've been going to meetings twice a week for months locally. Honest with the elders. I say, look, I believe the Bible. You don't need to convince me of that. But I do not believe the Watchtower and the governing body are who they claim to be. And so that's fine. They understand where I'm coming from. So that's where we're going with that. As you no doubt know, there are many religious organisations that claim to represent God, to speak for God, to have the only correct interpretation of the Bible, etc. And I obviously need to be sure that I do not end up following an organisation which is simply operated by men who are wrong about their teachings and make false claims about their past, etc. Seems reasonable to me. Any organisation involved in willfully deceiving its followers could not be God's organisation on earth, as far as I can tell from the Bible. However, I accept that honest printing and editorial mistakes could be made in a publication. I think that's all uh, reasonable. I'm sure any Jehovah's Witness would agree that that's fair and reasonable. So to the point in this letter, you see how I ramble. I am hopeful that you have an extensive library of early publications that can find a reference for me that I have not yet managed to find. So here we go. The year 1914 appears frequently in the Watchtower literature and many references are made to Charles Taze Russell, the Bible students, and to their search for Bible truths. With this in mind, I have read thousands of words from the early Watchtowers and from publications by... Russell, Rutherford, and more recent publications too. You might be able to see my bookshelf there. Everything you can see is Watchtower publications. I think I've got I've got all of Russell's books. I've got nearly all of Rutherford's books. I've got a load of the Watchtowers, the early Watchtowers, the later ones. I've got some of the Awakes. I've got a consolidation somewhere. I've got some Bibles. So I've got a good amount of material. The reason I've got the material is I was doing the Bible study and early on I'd read some things online about 1975. So I mentioned this to the ministerial servant and he said, I can't believe what you read in line, it's apostates writing lies. I was like, yeah, yeah, but I've seen like scans of the documents. No, no, they, they can change it. They can scan it and change the words. So I said, well, if I could get hold of an original, then could we look at it? I was like, yeah, you get an original. So, so I, I got one book and I was reading things and I got another and it just snowballed and Aspies can do strange things and collect things and now I've got loads of Watchtower books. Anyway, so I've it's, it's fascinating. Some of the stuff is very, very interesting. Okay, numbers fascinate me. Here we go. And if I'd been living 120 years ago, I'm sure I would have been a subscriber to Zion's Watchtower and Herald of Christ's Presence. That's what the Watchtower used to be called and would have eagerly read all the volumes of studies in the scriptures as they were produced. C.T. Russell's work on the maths using various proofs to arrive at his dates were very well thought out and presented. So the the four presidents, up to the end of uh, Freddie Fratton's, were all very different characters. Russell was very, very different to Rutherford. Russell's stuff I find very fascinating. It's very interesting, very well thought out. And that I can totally see why people who knew the Bible a bit, saw his work, thought this is amazing stuff. It is very well put together. So anyway, one day while perusing my 1972 Awake Bound volume, this is true, here it is, 1972. Now the reason I was looking at this was I was looking for information on 1975. I thought, well, this is three years before, so uh, there might be something in here. So I was just flicking through the pages and I came... I need to show you the scary woman. Here's the scared woman, scared old lady. And that's 
that this part here is what the whole letter is about. And I'll put it up on the screen for you. So I came across a claim that I found extraordinary considering the research I had already done on the early teachings. OK, so I will put it on the screen for you. Uh, there we go. There it is. If I can get it working. There we go. So this is the paragraph it's all about. As far back as 1879, the publishers of this magazine pointed to the year 1914 as a marked year in Bible prophecy, as the starting point for what the Bible calls the time of the end. So 35 years before 1914, so they claim, is they were saying 1914 is the starting point for the time of the end. To me, it makes sense what they're saying. That's perfectly clear. Can't be twisted. And I'm, that was from Awake, October the 8th, 1972, page 15. And this would be online if you want to go to their website. You don't get to see the pictures online, but you get the text. Um, now, you'll notice there's an asterisk at the end. So I mean, my initial thought was I wanted to know where they got this information from because I hadn't found it. So I thought maybe the asterisk says, but all the asterisk actually points to, I'm going to keep coming back to those words, it's here at the bottom, for a detailed explanation of the prophetic evidence, please see the book Babylon the Great Has Fallen. And I've got here, this is Babylon the Great Has Fallen. I've looked at the pages and they're just talking about calculations of how they reached 1914. There's no references there saying on this date, we predicted blah, blah about 1914 which is actually what I'm after. So back to the letter. Da, 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 da. OK, so I've just done that bit, done that. OK, I have bound volumes of some of the pre-1914 watchtowers and I can find references to the starting of the time of the end. That's true. But it's not associated with 1914. Likewise, I can find references to 1914 and many other years but 1914 is never linked with the start of the time of the end. For example, here we go. For example, Watchtower 1902. So here is, here is a bound volume. It's over 100 years old. This is 1901 to 1905. And all these stickies are various interesting bits of information. I'm not going to be doing all those for you. I, I just show you the first page I'm referencing. But they're all, to the, you see how small that writing is, I can't possibly show it here. So I'm going to show it on the screen. But every everything I'm showing on the screen are photographs that I've taken from my books. And yes, in theory, I could be an apostate that's good with Photoshop and make it look like old text. But that's not the case. And obviously, the Jehovah's Witnesses, I've shown this to a couple. They can see that obviously I've not faked this. So let's have a look at. The text, this is the important text, but there's my stickies. So the watches discern them not only as facts, but also as fulfillments of prophecy, as proofs that we are already in the period termed the time of the end. Further investigation and applications of the prophetic measurements prove to the watchtowers that we have been in the time of the end since 1799. So there we go. 1799, when you look at Russell's work is when the time of the end started. All right. Even after 1914, even after nine, oh, I'm jumping all over the place. So I want to come back to this because here we have in 1799, the time of the end started in 1799. How does that compare with this that says, 35 years before 1914, they said the starting point was 1914. Actually, even in 1902, they were still saying it was 1799. So that doesn't line up with that. OK, even after 1914, the Bible students were not claiming that 1914 was the beginning of the time of the end. I have Rutherford's creation book. Here it is. Rutherford was a very different character to Russell. If I'd come across the uh, the society when Rus Rutherford was in charge, I don't think I would have particularly gone for it. He's he had a different. I think Russell was confident, whereas Rutherford was arrogant. And 
Rutherford just came out with statements as far as I read it, whereas Russell backed things up very well empirically. He was wrong, but he still, at least he had a reason behind it. Anyway, did a creation. So I have Rutherford's creation publication from 1927, and there he wrote on page 24, so I'll bring it up for you. Oh, I better take my head out, there we go. Uh, here are mentioned then three and a half times of 360 prophetic days each, or a total of 1,260 prophetic days, which would mark the beginning of the time of the end of this beastly order. 1,260 years from 539 AD brings us to 1799, which is another proof that 1799 definitely marks the beginning of the time of the end. Say that again. 1927 we're talking here, so this is 13 years after 1914. The Society is saying they, there's proof that 1799 definitely marks the beginning of the time of the end. And how does that compare to this, where they're claiming that 35 years before 1914, they're saying the starting point was 1914, when in fact years after this they were still saying 1799 was the start of the end. So um, to an Aspie like me that just as sees things at face value, it doesn't seem to add up. There are plenty of other examples I could give from before the 1930s where the beginning of the time of the end was proven, that's the language I used, was proven, proof, no, 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 that sort of thing, to be 1799. Now on to 1914. Regarding 1914, Russ wrote the following. Can I, there we go, that's the watchtower. I'll just take my head out quickly so you can see it. There we go. It's the uh, 1903 watchtower, October the 1st. He wrote the following, Palestine will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled, which is October 1914. Interesting point here. I don't know if you're aware of this. The Jehovah's Witnesses make a big thing about they predicted 1914 before it happened. Oh, look, World War I has started in 1914. Look, they were bang on the money. They weren't bang on the money. Russell always said October. They had countdown cards, went to the end of September. October 1914 is when it all happened. World War I started in July. They're actually a few months out. It happened to be the same year, but it wasn't the time he said. It's very important to Russell's predictions that it was in the autumn. That it was in October. July is irrelevant, it means nothing in his reckoning. Anyway, sorry, I digress. By that time the heavenly kingdom will be in power and the ancient worthies, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all the holy prophets will be resurrected and constitute the earthly representatives of the spiritual invisible kingdom of Christ and his bride, the gospel church. So effectively in 1914 what the teaching was is you're going to have what's now called the paradise earth. The early fathers come back. They're ruling with Christ. They're the uh, they're the earthly representatives of this spiritual invisible kingdom. And when that didn't happen, Abraham and the boys didn't come back. They then changed it to oh, nineteen mid nineteen twenties. They're going to come back, and that obviously didn't happen either. I could do that in another video if you wanted to. Uh, so that was that. The bo uh, where am I going with this? Um, click, yeah. Sorry, I'm talking to myself here. So here we go. So we just looked at that. So 1914, the prediction of 1914 is when Abraham, Isaac, Jacob come back and it's going to be the Paradise Earth. And how do you think that compares to saying 1914 is the starting point of the time of the end? That's just balmy. We've completed the time of the end and now we've got the Paradise Earth and the thousand year reign. So this... This isn't looking good for them at all now. All right. So the Bible students teaching was that there was a 40 year harvest from 1874 to 1914 with Jesus being present since 1874, albeit invisibly. In the creation book we looked at earlier, Rutherford wrote on page 291. So here it is. To understand the event concerning the Lord's second presence from 1874 to 1914 requires one to be spiritually minded and the clergy are not spiritually minded. So anyone who's had any association with the Jehovah's Witnesses will know 
not so much now they talk about the Catholic Church now, but early on, Russell and Rutherford were constantly laying into the, the Catholic Church mainly, but also Protestant churches as well. And I was saying about the arrogance, here's the arrogance that you have to be spiritually minded to know, to understand that the Lord's presence started in 1874. And it's, it's like, well, I'm at, it's not even what they teach now, but there you go. That's what he was saying at the time. Da, da, da. The Watchtower from 1905. Here's another one then. So that's kicking you into 1905. So I'm not looking at the uh, camera much, by the way. But I have to look at this, look at this, and going all crazy. Millennial Dawn, Volume 3. So this is studied in the scripture, the third volume. I got all seven of those. It's a great read if you ever get a chance. Um, proves from a study of Daniel's prophecy of the 1260 days that the time of the end is a period of 115 years beginning with 1799 and ending with 1914 so the teaching was just to be clear in case that doesn't make any sense the start of the time of the end is 1799 the end of the time of the end is 1914 there we go how does that compare with this, where they say the starting point is 1914? It's like, it's crazy. How, where on earth are they getting this from? And uh, that was the point of my letter. So I then go on. I am perfectly aware that the Watchtower admit that some of their early teachings were false. And there has since been new light, as they call it. So I'm not asking for justification of the pre-1930s teachings regarding the significance of the various dates. Now, what I did, I downloaded PDFs of all my watchtowers, and I've got several years' worth, and I scanned through the watchtowers and looked for every number I could find from about 1750 up to about the year 2000, and I noted down everything that was a date, and there were several dates that were there. It was annoying because all the page numbers as well. But anyway, I went through, took hours and hours and hours, and four dates appeared a lot. The four dates that appear a lot are... 1799, which is when the time then started. 1874, Jesus is invisibly in the heavens. 1878, he's now ruling. 1914, it all comes to an end. And Paradise Earth. Now, 1914 is not the date that's mentioned the most. I believe it was 1874 was the main date. Anyway, so in the letter, I, I say about the significance of the various other dates. The first three dates... 1799, 1874, 1878, are now ignored, apart from the odd historical book. So, for example, this book here, in here they do pass a reference to 1874. That's what the early people said something about 1874. They don't mention 1799 in there at all. Um, so the old three dates are ignored, and the fourth one, 1914, is redefined. So, I am simply after a publication name, year and reference from 1879 where, and then I put in quotes again, the publishers of this magazine pointed to the year 1914 as a marked year in Bible prophecy as the starting point for what the Bible calls the time of the end. I am very hopeful that you can find this reference for me as it is a very audacious claim. To make a prediction about a testable future event and get it right would be impressive. But if the organisation has been deceitful with this claim, then how could I be expected to believe other things they assert? It may be that this claim was simply a misprint, and they meant to write the publishers of this magazine pointed to the year 1799 as a Marxian Bible prophecy as the starting point, the time of the end. And the claim was corrected in a later publication. So I'm throwing them a lifeline here. They could have said, oh, no, no, we got it wrong. We said in this publication, sorry for the misprint. But they didn't actually say that because it didn't actually happen. I trust this makes sense and I very much appreciate the time that it would be required to find the original quote. I'm also very grateful for all the time and effort the ministerial servant has invested in me so far. And if you're watching ministerial servant, you know who you are. We did have a great time and I hope you get in touch. He moved away. We didn't end on bad terms. So here is the letter from the Watchtower. I covered up my address. No privacy and all that. So here's their response. So hopefully everything we did there makes sense. You know where I'm coming from. You said this. 
the evidence shows something else. So where is your quote that says it? Dear blah blah. We are replying to your letter. Okay, thank you. Yep, yep, yep. As you no doubt appreciate, almost 50 years after an article was published, it is difficult for us to be sure of what the author had in mind in using a given phrase. Have you ever heard such nonsense? The point of writing something down is that you know what somebody is thinking. So let's look at this again. As far back as 1879, the publishers of this magazine pointed to the year 1914 as a marked year in Bible prophecy as the starting point for what the Bible calls the time of the end. I know exactly what the author had in mind. The author wanted the people who were reading this to think that before 1914, they predicted 1914 to be what they now teach it to be. And the evidence shows this to be untrue. So their response to say, oh, it's difficult to know 50 years later, how do we know what they wrote? If that was their view, how could they possibly use the Bible written 2000 years ago and further? You can't possibly know what Moses meant when he was writing that. How do you know what John and Luke and Paul were meaning when they wrote those words? This is a nonsense response. OK, then they throw in, and I've seen Watchtower do this sort of thing, some misdirection. Of course, it has been our understanding for many decades at the time of the end referred to in the book of Daniel began at the end of the seven times. Now that is true. It has been their understanding for many decades, but those decades started in the 1930s. That doesn't change this article. They then go on to say, Charles T. Russell wrote in the Bible Examiner of October 1876 that this period of seven times would end in 1914. That is also true. But Charles Taze Russell then wanted to say that and that's the end of it because that's the end of the time of the end. So they've taken two statements here that are talking about two different periods in their history and trying to mush them together to say, oh, no, no, we did say this and they didn't. Now, this Bible examiner, you can I haven't got this copy, but you can find it online. Charles T. Russell does talk about 1914, but in the context of it being the end, not in the context of it being the start of the end. It's the end of the end. So that's no good. OK, then they say the expectation of the early Bible students surrounding the year 1914 are candidly discussed on pages blah, blah of the Proclaimers book. Here it is, the Proclaimers book. And of course, I'd already checked in that, but I checked again. I don't think they are candidly discussed. They do say some things about the beliefs, but they miss an awful lot out of what they believed. Things that if they put in there, I think some Jehovah's Witnesses may find surprising. And they say that publication is available online. And then we commend you for your desire to ensure what you are learning is accurate and based entirely on God's word. See Acts 17.11, which of course is about the Bereans. We warmly encourage you to continue studying the Bible with Jehovah's Witnesses. Please accept our Christian love and best wishes. Yours faithfully, Christian Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. So, I am not anti-Jehovah's Witness in any way whatsoever. The Jehovah's Witnesses I've spoken to are very nice and polite. Given that I'm Aspie, they're incredibly patient with me. Uh, we go off on all sorts of tangents, so I'm very grateful for all the time they have spent with me. But I do find the organisation and the stuff they, they come out with um, bizarre and logically incorrect. So I'm still not convinced that the offer is still out there. If it could be proved to me, of course I'd be a Jehovah's Witness, it's logical. Something else along the same lines, and this is all relevant still, because I, like I said, I've been going to meetings locally a couple of times a week. And, uh, okay, what I would, the ministry or servant suggested, so I don't frighten people, I just sit in my chair. And afterwards, I stay in my chair. And sometimes somebody will come to talk to me, and sometimes they won't. Obviously, sometimes it's just small talk, how's your week, how are you doing? But occasionally, they would talk about something biblical, which would be interesting. And sometimes an elder would talk to me. And there was one Thursday evening a few weeks ago, one of the elders said that they'd be all right for me to show them the letter. Because I said, look, I wrote to the Watchtower, they wrote back, can I show you the letter? So I showed them this, a couple of other relevant things. So the Awake from 1973, if I can sort my machine out, had a similar relevant article. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, okay. 
it says something very similar. Huh. Okay, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses pointed to the year 1914, decade in advance, as marking the start or the conclusion of the system of things. No, they didn't. Now, the words here are the conclusion of the system of things rather than the other phrase. But the two phrases mean the same. I've got a book that ties them together, shows it's exactly the same. So a year later, they were still making this claim. This asterisk simply points to the Bible examiner, which is what the letter pointed to. So that still says nothing. And then this is from 1993. Uh, and it's from, uh, where are we? I think that's probably the 15th of January, 93. Christ's present. And the second paragraph, when a foreign head of state visits a country, the dates of his presence there are generally announced. This has been true of the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. The watchtower has consistently, remember that word, the watchtower has consistently presented evidence to honest hearted honest students of the Bible prophecy that Jesus' presence in heavenly kingdom power began in 1914. The watchtower in 1993 said they have consistently presented evidence that Jesus' presence began in 1914. For the first 50 years, that is not true. The first 50 years, they were saying 19, sorry, seven, nine, 1874 is when his presence started. They haven't consistently said this. This isn't true. Now, if this was a broadcast, we might have Garrett Loesch here and... The marvellous thing in the monthly broadcast is they like to take a basic word and look up a definition of it. So you think you're learning something consistently. So I looked on the dictionary in every case or on every occasion, invariably. So that's the meaning of the word, Garrett. Let's have another look. Invariably, on every case, the uh, Watchtower has been saying that Jesus' presence began in 1914. No, they haven't. It wasn't at all. The first 50 years, that isn't true. So, so I I thought when I present this to the elder, he'll start looking at it. I've been about half a minute or a minute, he shut me down. So I wasn't actually expecting to get far. And we were chatting for about half an hour and he let me go through all this stuff. And I'm extremely grateful that he did. And we had a good time looking at it, at least I did. So it was all very useful. So we looked at it and I explained to him, look, my concerns are, as far as I can see, th this is untrue and I don't understand this. And I, I was careful to use the word untrue. And then I'll never forget what he said. He looked at me and he said, it's lies. They're lying. They lied. And I, I said, well, well I, I didn't want to say the word lied. I thought it was a bit stuck. No, 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 they're lying. And so this elder was saying what was published in the 70s was a lie. What was published in the 90s was a lie. And so I said, well, look, well, my issue is if they lied in the 70s and they lied in the 90s, which we know they did, how do you know they're not lying today? They could still be lying. And of course, the line that came out is a line you'll often hear with Jehovah's Witnesses if you point something out about the organisation, and that is, oh, we go look at their fruits, which is just off topic. Now, we just around this time we were looking at um revelation and i I'd, I'd already spoken to him about armageddon and things so the watchtower teaching is unless you're a jehovah's witness in good standing and baptized as a jehovah's witness you're not going to survive armageddon and he agrees that's the way it was i said well the problem is to be a jehovah's witness i need to be baptized to be baptized I need to answer a whole load of questions and get them right to do with their teachings. And these questions include questions about the organisation. They call it the faithful and discreet slave. I said, so, so we both know that the faithful and discreet slave have lied. There's no doubt they've lied. And I'm supposed to answer these questions saying that I believe the faithful and discreet slave are who they claim to be. But I don't believe that which means I can never be a Jehovah's Witness unless I lie, but then you would know I was lying, so you wouldn't accept it anyway. So I can't be a Jehovah's Witness. So if your teaching is right, I am going to die at Armageddon because I know this thing, 
where the faith and discreet slave are lying. And in my mind, I can't see how they're being faithful if they're lying. I don't think the God of the Bible would require his slave to lie. And if their God did tell them to lie, then I can't see it's the God of the Bible. So I think that's probably pretty much all I've got to say about that. I know I've rambled on a bit. I hope you managed to follow that. If it was useful and helpful, a comment or a like, or both would be good, subscribing. Uh, I'd love to put up other videos. Some friends and family who've known how much time I've spent looking at the Watchtower, Watchtower material have suggested that I should put some of the information I've got out there just because I spent so much time on it, I guess. Um, if, you've got any, if you want to say anything in the comments, please be respectful. I know there are people out there who have been hurt by the organisations, but please don't use this page to be ranting about them. Uh, there'll be other videos talking about other things, but I only want to look at things that have actually been written and not more anecdotal things. I think that's it. Thanks. Bye.